Hey, Weather Warriors, in this video, we're talking about a historic, massive cool down that could be sweeping across the United States here around the 11th of November and beyond. And that's what we're going to talk about. But before we begin, click the subscribe button if you want daily forecast updates, extreme weather event breakdowns, more detailed than you would see on TV. We go longer range as well storm chasing events stuff like that click the subscribe button i also got my winter forecast coming out if it isn't all out already my official one which is much more in detail than my previous one so stay tuned to that now let's get right into it here we're going to get fast forward this out into uh around the eighth or so and i want to sh show you some key features here that are that are going on look at this uh height anomalies okay these are height anomalies and what you're looking at here is essentially expansion in the atmosphere when you have higher height anomalies this is looking at the 500 millibar which is off the ground okay and when it rises like that there's expanding air essentially just means it's warming up you're gonna get warmth you're gonna get typically uh, just warm air underneath and then uh, stormy and cold along these uh, little short waves here now there's a very high height anomalies sweeping into the Arctic and what's gonna happen is that's gonna pinch cold air down into the United States here it's gonna set up some serious cold air now here we go this is around the 9th now and that's really starting to get cut in to the Arctic you can see that blocking right there now there's gonna be some blocking that builds out over here and what that's going to do is that's going to squeeze air cold air into the United States and it's going to trap it there for a while so watch what happens as we head towards the 11th here this is the 11th during the morning now this is the 11th during the evening you can see that ridging a little bit starting to build you got tons of just high height anomalies out here in the Arctic and there's your cold blast coming in the coldest air is going to be near along and just behind this vortex here okay that's where your typically your coldest air is going to be especially early on here but this will sweep to the east so this is the 11th now as we go towards the 12th this is around the 7 p.m on the 12th look at the ridging starting to build in here and you got ridging over here this is a perfect setup for a cold a major arctic outbreak for the eastern third or uh, i would say eastern two-thirds of the united states that is very cold and you can see this thing is completely closed off so you got an arctic air mass just floating out into the eastern united states this is the 14th you can see there's still a lot of ridging up there there's gonna be cold air look at that see look what happens right there around the 14th and 15th this cold air comes up there's blocking right here there's blocking here this cold air gets recirculated around and comes back down into the united states mid-month this is the 14th 15th look at it just swirling around 16th 17th 18th and it looks like maybe there's signs that it'll break down towards the 18th but you can see this arctic air mass just swirling around we could have several shots of very cold air here in november now let's look at the temperature anomalies so how cold will it get here and i'm going to go to um the 850s i think would be the best and then we'll look at actual temperatures we're going to zoom into the united states here we'll go national this is pivotalweather.com anyone can check this out i've got a special announcement uh, for this website here that i figured out i figured out a cool new feature that you can use and we'll announce that here later in the video but let's look at the temperature anomalies for now and we're going to go out to the eighth it's very warm in the west and this pattern will continue to bring warm air into the west coast of the united states with that ridging it's going to be mostly the east or the western third this is the uh, night eighth we're looking at right now we're going to fast forward this now so this height anomaly is going to bring colder air near the surface this is near the surface the 850 is just off the ground i think this is the best for you know just the visual types because it doesn't have all those numbers and stuff we're just going to keep this a little more visual here now you look at the uh this is around the 11th okay this is 11th at 7 p.m plenty of warm air sweeping into the southwestern united states and you can see this arctic blast coming here in the central united states and this is a very very strong looking signal and you can see temperatures 20 to 25 degrees below some areas 30 below uh not zero below average but this just sweeps into the eastern united states towards the 12th 13th and then 14th 
still very cold across the United States, but that Arctic air is going to circulate back in because of that blocking around the 15th or so. And you can see multiple surges. Here we are again, around the 15th and 16th. That sweeps to the east, delivers another storm. And so, and potentially another one as well. Uh, but I think that could change towards late month. But plenty of warm air to the, the western half of the United States and then cold east. Because of that ridging out west, that's going to keep it warm out there this time around. So finally, some cold for the central and especially eastern United States. Now, how about the uh, temperatures? And then we'll look at the storm tracks. And then I'm going to show you that key, uh, that new feature on pivotal weather here that is pretty groundbreaking. So let's look at the precipitation or uh, temperatures. Go back to that. We're going to look at the wind too. So this is around the 6, and so what we're looking at here is the temperatures, the actual surface temperatures, the winds, which are those little barbs, and then the pressure, so the pressure systems. And this is the 10th. Here's all your Arctic air getting you know, funneled up over here, and it's going to get squeezed into the United States. Lots of snowpack starting to build up there. Folks, we're in for potentially a crazy winter and uh, late fall here. Now, let's look at the 11th here this is going to be around 7 p.m you can see this cold front there's a low pressure system right here actually out in the uh, northeastern united states we'll have to look at that in a second and you can see this very strong potent cold front you can see those iso bars getting tightly packed together look at this high pressure system way out here up down up here and you can see those iso bars starting to build in so high pressure starting to build in winds stiff out of the northwest this blue line here is the 32 degree line. So watch this come all the way down towards the Gulf of Mexico as we head towards the 12th here. Well, the, the 11th overnight into the 12th during the morning, you can just see temperatures sub-zero potentially in the Dakotas here. So very, very cold, 32 degrees all the way close to the Gulf of Mexico. Very warm out in the southwestern United States. Midwest dealing with potentially sub well, I mean, I would say uh, not sub-zero, but uh, single digits, essentially, for much of the uh, Midwestern United States. We track this into the day on um, the 13th, the morning of the 13th. Look at the 32-degree line now. This pattern is supportive of a blast that will actually affect the East Coast. Previous patterns, not so much, but this one with the blocking out to the East and the West this is going to pinch some very cold air and it's going to make it potentially all the way out to the east. You can see 32s all the way out to the uh, essentially the seaboard. Now, it's not going to quite hit the sea because the sea waters are warm. That's why it's a little bit less likely right along the sea that you'll get the coldest air. But nonetheless, if you're inland, you're going to get some extremely cold air. Talking single digits in some of these areas. I think that's a little bit overdone, but definitely teens and 20s for much of the Midwest out into the East Coast. You can see the 32 degree line extends all the way down into Florida. Meanwhile, this West is continuing to be pretty warm. So we go to the 14th now, and uh, we'll go over about the fifth, the morning of the 15th, you can see another blast comes in. Look at this high pressure. It's gonna start to sweep into the Central and Eastern United States as well. There's your old low pressure system from the first wave. There's uh, your single digits, sub-zero temperatures in this region right here. So we're already dealing with December, January type weather in November. So we are like a month or two in advance here. This is going to sweep to the south, and you can see another powerful low pressure system moves into the northeast. Here it is right here. It might warm up again, but it will get cold again behind this thing. Look at this. We're talking zero to 10 degrees in the northern U.S. Again, a little bit overestimated, I think, with that. But nonetheless, teens, 20s, potentially a couple of areas with sub-zero temperatures in the central plains as we head towards the 16th. And then this sweeps to the east. Wow, that is incredible. GFS computer model is actually saying this is uh, the 17th, the morning of the 17th, sub-zero temperatures for Missouri. Now, this is pretty far out there. Uh, you know, very, very unlikely to see that in mid-November for that region. That would be absolutely astronomical historic for that region. But we'll have to watch that. Either way, this pattern is supportive of very, very cold air. Now, let's look at the precipitation and snowfall potential here for the country. And so we go towards the uh, 11th here. Actually, look at that. Around the 9th. 
Okay, this is not too far away here. In the ninth, there's actually a potential for a little bit of uh, mixed precipitation out in North Carolina. GFS has been kind of consistent with some mixed signals here in Virginia and North Carolina around the, the 8th and 9th. Not too far out, so we'll definitely have to make some more videos for that. So here's the main blast. This is coming around the 11th. And you can see ahead of this or behind this main blast, 32 or it's the 540 lines, essentially kind of near, near freezing line in the atmosphere. You can see snow that comes in behind it. Usually with these really stiff blasts, you do not get organized systems in the plains with you know how progressive and widespread this is. But we could see something in the East Coast, and you can see this start to develop gets a little bit more curvature to it and you could get your first snow of the season as far south as Kentucky towards the 11th and 12th there is now plenty of cold air to deal with for this next system that comes through afterwards and so you can see that system that's pretty strong right there very widespread area of snow you're going to get some very uh, small little batches of snow towards mid-month in the northeastern United States. Now, this is a system we want to watch here. Because there's cold air already in place here, the second system could be even more snowfall as it moves to the east. And you can see more snow for Montana, uh, Nebraska, South Dakota. Now, this will track to the east. And here we go. This is something to watch towards the late month. This is very far out. This is going to change a lot. But you can see very uh, stiff amounts of precipitation, lots of cold air to work with get some snow out behind it. We'll see if this uh, can track any further south, but definitely for parts of Canada and uh, the Great Lakes towards a uh, later month, and that, and that uh, will scoop to the east. So I wanted to show you a cool tool on Pivotal Weather now. They're actually offering the ECMWF, the European Computer Model, is actually, they're offering snowfall amounts. Now I'm not 100% sure I can show them on the channel yet, I'll have to look into that. But you can definitely see the snowfall amounts for free now on Pivotal Weather by the European Computer Model. You can also see temperature anomalies and all that type of stuff, precipitation types and rates. I'm not 100% sure I can show this on the channel yet. If we can, I'll go ahead and start showing these in the future. But uh, for now, I thought I'd show you guys that, where you can find that, pivotalweather.com. Just click up on the model section and find your ECMWF high res, or I believe maybe even uh, just be the high res one. So that's the one where you can see the snowfall amount. So I thought I'd show you that, run that by, and other websites are doing this as well because the uh, they have kind of changed the rules about uh, the snowfall map. So pretty awesome right there. Go ahead and sit, click that subscribe button if you like these uh, daily forecast updates. Again, I'll have my winter forecast out soon. I've actually been really um, taking a lot of time on this, kind of being a perfectionist on this. But it'll be really awesome when it's out. We'll probably have 10 different videos because this is going to be a long one. And I'm going to have a simple version out uh, as soon as Monday. So click the subscribe button. Hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, we'll see you soon.